don't record. Fantastic. And then I'll share my screen. I will also hold up the chat, guys. So if you need anything, then let me know. I also try and keep letting people in here, but they were late. So apologies if you don't get in. If you're watching this on replay, you were late. And so um, be on time next time, basically. So welcome to this uh, workshop, this power hour. I'm going to try and be as succinct as possible to get through this for you. Um, but again, I will try. Okay. Any questions, just drop them uh, in the chat. I will open the chat wherever it is and I will try and answer them as soon as possible. Or if any of our clients are in here and someone asks a question that you think you can answer, um, do so. That's fine. And Shelby's in here also. And Shelby's one of our coaches. So Shelby, um, if you can answer any questions that come in, that would be super helpful as well. Shelby's the pro on this, actually. Um, so definitely she knows what she's talking about. Let's open the chat. All right. So hormone harmony power hour. So this is for you to take control from within, right? People always want to just lose weight or you go to the GP, the doctor, and they tell you to go on some sort of medication without actually asking you anything about Hey, how's your stress level? How's your vitamin D? How are you sleeping? How is your energy? They don't ask any of these questions. And these are like the most important questions that they should be asking. Okay, so I'm here as a temporary doctor, shall we say, to help you guys ask yourselves these questions and to ask you them also. So how many of you guys, you can put in the chat or you can raise your hand in the um, video. I'll open up my screen so I can see you guys. How many of you guys get any of these? Digestive issues like bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, cravings for carbs, particularly in the evening or after food, uh, fatigue in the morning or in the afternoon, or sometimes just all the way through, <laughs> just constantly fatigued. Uh, mood swings, who gets mood swings? Anxiety, low mood, who wants to like often kill their partner? I mean, you know, shout at them. And... Um, any difficulty losing weight. I guess most of you have difficulty losing weight and that's why you're in our group and that's why you come to this, okay? Particularly in losing weight, gaining weight around the midsection as well. That's another thing, right? Fat around the belly, no matter what you do. So I can see in the chat, like lots of you, some of you guys in the video as well, hands. Um, so I can see this is going to be super helpful for you guys. Um, all righty so can we just make sure we are <laughs> husband's still alive can we make sure that we've muted guys so tammy there we go thank you very much um we just closed this but i think this is gonna be really helpful i hope you guys are taking notes so i want you guys to answer this question in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself how do you lose weight? If you're a client, do not answer the correct answer. Answer what you thought before you learned the truth. Okay, so what are the typical things that people say? I want to know. I want to find my chat box, which has now disappeared. There it is. Thank you. Uh, move more. Yeah. Eat less, move more. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Eat less, move more. Eat healthy food. Cut calories. Yep. I'll say, I'll say what you hate, eat less, move on. I do hate it, yeah. Eat less, cut out the crap, yeah. All these are like very, very normal things um, that we are told. And the fitness space has let you guys down. I can only apologize on behalf of every fitness influencer that is like 18 years old, in a like skinny, skinny clothes, a little crop top, who thinks like just, you know, there's a cardio, do my workout, um, it's going to work. And you're like, yes, love, but I am 40. I've got two kids trying to work a full-time job. I've got hormonal issues and I haven't got the metabolism of an 18-year-old anymore. So I can only apologize on behalf of those people for ruining your perception of how to lose weight, okay? And also on the doctors. I apologize for the doctors as well who don't actually go through any nutritional training um, or any exercise training or any hormonal training, okay? So can only apologize for those people who give you the advice of this as well. Hit workouts, eat less, move more, carry it. Correct. Okay, so this is how your body actually burns calories, okay? So if you're a client or have done any of our challenges, you probably have seen this before. I'm super passionate about this and getting people to understand that this is what happens in your body. 
So this stands for resting energy expenditure and this um, stands for non-resting energy expenditure, okay? So this is what you do at rest. This is what you do when you're not resting. So basically sleep, sitting, um, you know, not doing anything. Neat, let's, call, let's, let's talk through these, right? So neat is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Let's call it neat. And this is the movements and the activities that you do not exercise. So you guys know I'm like pretty handsy when I'm talking. Um, I, I tell everyone I'm like partly Italian, so I have to speak my hands. It's not, I just love pizza. But if you like are doing this, this is your neat, okay? Walking around the shop is your neat. Um, cooking, cleaning, you know, stuff that you're moving, but not for the sake of exercise, just because you move, right? So neat makes up about 20% of the calories you burn every single day. Then you've got the thermic effect of food, your tear. This is how much it takes to digest, eat, digest your food, right? So uh, different food groups have different, um, they burn more or less calories. So protein is burns the most calories when you're eating it and fat burns the least. <laughs> and also carbs don't burn very much depending on if it's like a, a chocolate bar versus a piece of broccoli, right? So that, that often changes that. And that is about 10%. And then anybody can guess what EAT stands for? What do you think is 5% of all the calories you burn every day? Any guesses? Guesses on a postcard or in the chat. Just keep letting people in here. Exercise, correct. It stands for exercise activity thermogenesis, right? So non-exercise activity thermogenesis and exercise activity thermogenesis. So you guys who are going to the gym, busting a gut, oh, I got a sweat, sweat is fat crying and uh, I'll rest when I'm dead and all that kind of stuff. Ironically, you're being 5% of your calories. That's what you are focusing 100% of your effort on. The amount of you guys who have said to me, do you know what? I, I want to do coaching. I want to join a program, but I can't exercise right now. So there's no point. I would say about 30 percent of our clients don't exercise Gina was a client she did the photo shoot she heard it back she lost the same amount of weight in the same amount of time exercising as not exercising for the shoot right so it, it definitely plays way well it doesn't play as much of a of a, um, an influence as we put on it we're like exercise do or die no you can not exercise and still lose weight right um and now we have got this 70%, your BMR. Now you've probably heard of BMR. People have done TDEE calculators. So a total daily energy expenditure. This is this basically what I'm showing you now is your TDEE. And so people are like, I did a TDEE calculator and they said my BMR was 1,600. So if I want to lose weight, I need to eat 500 less, which is 1,100. Um, and this is, excuse me, this is fucking terrible. Okay, <laughs> please do not... Go underneath your BMR. Your BMR is your basal metabolic rate, metabolic metabolism, keep that in mind. Um, and so these, these are the calories that you burn at rest, non-exercise, uh, non okay? So your resting energy expenditure. So BMR is things like um, breathing, you know, that old thing that we're all doing. It's things like repairing your muscles, uh, it's things like just surviving, thinking, all of these kinds of things all fall into the 70%. So riddle me this. If 5% of your energy expenditure comes from exercise, so you've been 5% of your total calories in exercise, and 70% in your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, your day-to-day -day living, why do you focus so much energy on the 5%? Even the food burns more calories than the energy that you burn on exercise, okay? So you need to ask yourself, as scientists, we're all scientists today, okay? As a scientist, what would make sense? You guys know you want to be efficient, you want to be effective. Let's focus our energy on the 70%. Let's make that 70% as big as possible because you don't have to move. You burn calories when you sleep. And for me, I would rather being off calories sleeping than running or doing any kind of cardio exercise, okay? So we're going to be focusing on BMR and I just want you guys to understand what is happening here. Amen to that. Yeah, Grace, she loves uh, loves her muscles. So what is gut health? Let me just move my head here. This here. 
Okay, so where's gut health? Gut health refers to the overall well-being of the GI tract involving a balanced microbiota, proper gut, fun- gut aligning function, and effective digestion. So basically, what this means is your ability to digest food, for it to come through properly, and have a healthy um gut microbiome so basically you've got bacteria in your gut and for them to thrive means that well I'll, I'll tell you means but basically there's lots of lots of them we want them to be at the optimal okay so this is the balanced microbiota making sure that we've got the good balance having proper gut lining function so the gut lining is one cell thick right? literally one cell so if you have any permeability if you've got any like um holes i guess in your gut then anything from your gut, your colon, that shouldn't be in your blood, shouldn't be in your bloodstream because it's supposed to come out the other end, is now going into your bloodstream. Toxins, you know, all the, sometimes like really bad uh, germs, basically germs, bad germs are going around your body, causing inflammation. And there's also a blood brain barrier. And sometimes that can then go into the brain as well. So things like brain fog, uh, mental fatigue anxiety and depression, all of these kinds of things can be massively improved by working on your gut health. And the effects, <clears throat> excuse me, the effective digestion absorption of nutrients, of course, this means being able to absorb the um, the nutrients from the foods that you're eating. Because let's say you ate a whole plethora of delicious vegetables and fruit, like your diet was spot on, but your gut lining was shit. <laughs> like, you didn't have any microbiome in there. Like, it was leaky gut um that means that you can't even take the energy which is calories calories are energy you can't even take the calories and nutrients out of that food to then use right so you're just like wasting it um so it's really really important gut health is super super important okay so what is the gi tract this is not a biology lesson thankfully but i am going to talk about this a little bit i'm just going to make sure everyone in the chat is muted because I can hear like a little bit of back sound. Mm-hmm-hmm. Apologies, there's so many of you. Um, so one, two, there we go. Okay, so you. St- I'm not going to go through each of these, but you guys probably know where each of these pieces are on your body. So you've got your mouth. This is where it starts. Well, actually, it doesn't. It starts with the smell and the look of things. But basically, you then have um, saliva starts to break up food because it goes in your mouth, down the esophagus, into the stomach, through the small intestine, through the large intestine, through the rectum at the other end, okay? That's basically how this works. And this picture here is obviously the whole shebang, should we say. Um, So you guys can take a screenshot of this if you want. Um, Otherwise, you could just Google what the GI tract is. But I don't want to go through this um, right, you know, fully. But I will kind of point out here this large intestine is the colon, and this is where everything's absorbed. And this is where most of your microbiome live, okay? So that's going to be really important for us to understand. Um, okay, so hormones. What are hormones? Lots of people are like, I've got hormone problems. I'm like, what, do you know where it is? No, <laughs> I just can't lose weight. Okay, right. Okay, so a hormone is a messenger that goes through the body. And types is actually over 50 hormones that we know of that are... A, labeled as hormones actually um that every human has right or pretty much every human has um so you've got an endocrine system which i'll talk about in i think i'll talk about in a sec can't remember if i took that out um and so each endo piece of the endocrine system secretes or produces and secretes a different type of hormone okay and these then regulate the physiological processes and to maintain homeostasis in the body which means Keep it at a level, you know, keep it hunky dory um, and make sure that everything is moving correctly. Mm, No, I I did take it out actually. So there's lots of different ones in the body and they all do different things essentially. I'm not going into it here because I've already got 26 sides, guys. So anyone can give me some examples of different hormones that you've heard of. I would love to hear them in the chat. And I'm going to hydrate myself whilst we do this. Testosterone. Lots of women don't know, but we also have testosterone in higher amounts than uh, estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen? <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, estrogen and progesterone. Yeah. <laughs> Leptin. 
Nice one, Gina. Cortisol, cortisol, yeah. Tell who the clients work on you are, I should say. The people who are uh, answering the harder ones. Gina, you said lectin. Can you remember the other one that works in tangent with it? Gremlin. Gremlin, yes. Sounds like gremlin is gremlin. Okay. But yeah, perfect. So there are, like I said, there's over 50, um, over 50 hormones in the body. And we're not going to go through every one of them. You would be happy to hear. So you've got like insulin, glucagon, uh, uh, thyroid. People, you guys have probably heard of thyroid, T3 and T4, cortisol, adrenaline, and uh, epinephrine, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, melatonin, growth hormone, leptin, ghrelin, oxytocin, vasopressin, um, which is anti diuretic hormone. So, actually, vitamin D, also a hormone, but uh, well, he's an honorary, he's an honorary vitamin. Um, so, these are some of them. We're going to talk about, we're going to be touching on a couple of them um, as we go through this. Oh, I did put it in. Look at that. I thought, hey, they need more. They need more. So this is your endocrine system. And you can see in here uh, the different um, points of the body that hormones are created, okay, all the way from the brain, all the way down. So the endocrine system are the glands that actually produce and secrete the uh, hormones. And like I said earlier, they keep everything running smoothly, including metabolism, okay, Remember the BMR? Remember what the M stands for? There we go. Uh, growth. So this is actually mental and physical because when you sleep, obviously, memories, learning is embedded. So growth, physical, mental. And let me just let someone in here. Um, and reproductive functions. So you guys probably know uh, if you talk about the pill, maybe not the pill because doctors don't talk about actually what you do into your body. But maybe if you think about perimenopause, menopause, you think about estrogen, progesterone dropping off. If you are, and also testosterone drops off as well. If you're trying to build muscle, though, obviously testosterone is super important as well. Um, and it helps to maintain the balance, like I mentioned earlier. So it works in coordination with the, uh, with the nervous systems um, and ensures, sorry guys, let me just like all the way through to the end and let people, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me there you go. Um, what was I? In coordination with the nervous system and ensures proper communication. Okay, so if basically any of your um any of your glands are not damaged, that's not the right word, but if they're not working properly, or if they're not like on a really good time timer, which I'll talk about in a sec, um, then things are going to be thrown off. For example, the way I like to think about this, right, is your this is like you've got a clock, a cog, I should say, a cog in your body and this big cog is your circadian rhythm is your body clock okay and so all of these like little cogs on the side most of them are uh turned with this big one so if this big one is off then the other ones will be off of course you do have everything else like aging um that also decreases these as well you do have other issues like adrenal fatigue which is very common and people don't think about um thyroid issues like underactive overactive so a lot of these things we can't control right but if we can control anything let's do it right and let's also try and mitigate any damage for anything that could happen as we age unfortunately we can't stop the clock for women um but we can control the symptoms or, or work on them as best as possible so how are gut health and the endocrine system or hormones connected. So the gut secretes hormones. There we go, there's the first one that affect everything else, including the endocrine system. So if the gut isn't doing its job properly, the endocrine system is screwed, right? It's not performing optimally. If the gut is healthy, these signals are balanced so you can function well, you can do all the stuff, you feel good, cycles are regular, no pain, not like an emotional wreck neurotic like throughout the month or wherever you're all good and you've got good energy um, also uh, mental health is improved as well but if the gut's not healthy it can disrupt these signals so obviously the opposite happens right like mental health goes to shit for example um am i making sense to everybody i'm gonna pu pull up the video so i can see people's lovely faces and i can see them going yeah i'm having a great time i understand everything you're talking about 
Uh, let me just see. Great, great, great. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to be on the on the replay. Like, oh my god, do I look like that? Smile. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Everyone starts to turn off their cameras. Um. All right. Okay. So. Let me just see. Yes, makes sense. Perfect. Thank you, guys. All right, Faber, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if I feel like shit, if my hormones aren't going all right. I don't care if, uh, you know, if I look like shit. That's all I care about. Well, first of all, you probably want to leave this conversation. Because this does not apply to anyone who just wants to lose weight, okay? This applies to people who actually want to change their life, want to get more energy, want to become healthier, want to become stronger. If that's you, stay. If that is not you and you just concentrate on the scale, now's the time to leave. Bye. Um, all right, so the impact, what happens? So the gut produces ghrelin and peptide YY. So um, ghrelin is, helps you feel full. All right. Uh, does this apply to growing muscle too? Yes. Yes, Grace, it does. You have to have all these things in, in place to optimize that growth as well. Uh, like growth hormone, for example. Um, so appetite regulation, feeling full. If you are feeling constantly hungry, guess what's going to happen? You're going to overeat, all right? So <laughs> if we can make sure that ghrelin is good, we're not going to overeat and that's going to make fat loss easier i'm losing since trying to sort my hormones it's amazing good there you go louise that's, that's what it takes um okay poor gut health let me just let people in here poor gut health can cause chronic inflammation and that can trigger an immune, an immune response that can basically it causes inflammation across the body um i know it says here that it can contribute towards conditions like insulin resistance which as women as we get older that becomes a problem as well um so if we can keep our insulin oops our insulin insulin sensitivity high for as long as possible that's gonna really work in our favor as well so if you can't absorb the nutrients it disrupts the endocrine system's function okay so if you can't absorb the nutrients from the food then the endocrine system can't do its job and it's gonna make life harder um, and then the gut microbiota, my gut microbiome, the little bacteria in your gut affect energy balance. So for layman's terms, energy balance is calorie deficit, calorie maintenance, calorie surplus. Okay, it works like that. Um, and metabolism, there's that M word again. So disruptions in the gut microbiome often referred to dysbiosis. So like the off balance, so the good and the bad bacteria are like not uh, in they're not in balance, essentially. And this has been linked to things like obesity. So that's typically what happens. Um, a metabolic disorders, metabolic, um, metabolism problems, basically. Um, all righty. So does that make sense, guys? So can, I, can you see why it's important to lose or to work on your endocrine system, your hormones and your metabolism and your gut health to then be able to lose weight? Absolutely. Great. Fantastic. Processed food is definitely not good for gut health. Cause so much inflammation bloat in. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Good. So one of the things, so Jen, Jen K in here is a client. And that's one of the things we worked on with her quite early on was it's not necessarily about like taking stuff out and like removing stuff. Sometimes it's about swapping things. Sometimes it's simply about adding more. So if you add in more things that uh, fill you up, like, protein like lots of fiber fruit and vegetables then you're going to feel fuller so you're not going to want the extra serving of chocolate cake you're not going to want the half a sleeve of oreos you're not going to want to reach for those kinds of things uh yeah she wasn't eating enough before and that's the thing funny enough i spoke to someone earlier and they were like no i just don't know what the secret is I, do you know what the secret is with our clients how they get results we make them eat more not less that is like the that's the secret guys I've told you now, it's a recorded, everyone's going to know, everyone's going to know the secret. Um, but that's basically what happens. It's all about getting that good balance, getting a lifestyle that works, 
um, and helping your hormones as well. Um, eat breakfast, yeah, and more. So the gut communicates bidirectionally with the brain. So there is a gut-brain axis. There are schools of thought that suggest that the gut and the brain were connected. Um, and then as we grow, they kind of like go, grow apart. So the gut is the second brain. That's what we call it. And there's more and more and more science saying how um, the gut impacts the brain as well as the great, the, the great, the brain impact in the gut. Okay, it's a two-way system. You need to look after both sides. <clears throat> um, so it also influences stress response and the release of stress hormones like cortisol. Cortisol is another one of the things that we seriously work on with clients. And I'm sure they will put in the chat, like this is like the one thing Faye and the team are always saying, like take some time to yourself, stop stressing out, like make some me time, put yourself first and like empowering people to actually know that actually it is about you know, looking after yourself rather than just like punishing yourself with a shitload of cardio. Um, but yeah, chronic stress can then throw off your gut microbiome and gut function. Um, that was the main area I had to work on and kept me from losing weight. Yeah, there you go. Grace says 100%. So there we go. Perfecto. So what happens as we age? Because you're probably thinking, yeah, Faye, you said this is for over 35. It is, but under 35, so get values are. Um, but what happens as we age, right? Microbiota composition. That's posh, isn't it? Basically, your microbiome breaks down, there is less of it. Digestive function. The ability to digest food decreases. The gut barrier integrity, remember I said this one cell thick, starts to break down. Medication, oh, immune function. Your immune system is 70% um, stored in your gut. If your gut isn't good, it's going to go to shit. You're more likely to get ill. <clears throat> medication impact. The older we are, we've probably been on more medications. We're probably on the pill or being on some sort of like hormone replacement or hormone thing. You might have been on antibiotics, might have fallen and had like, you know, whatever else, ibuprofen, anti-inflammatories, um, basically anything. They throw a pill at you and you're like, yes, it sounds a mix feel better. Um, instead of working on like the main cause. Dietary changes. So as we get older, maybe we eat less because for some reason we now think that, oh, as long as I've made food for the kids, my husband, I don't want anything. I'm fine. We start to eat less. We eat less nutrients. We eat less variety. We kind of eat the same thing day in, day out. Uh, Grace got her prebiotics today. I has noticed there was a difference in antibiotics. Yeah, so quick one on it, antibiotics. Antibiotics kill off the bacteria, the good bacteria and the bad bacteria in your gut. So we recommended to um, Grace and our clients last night, I think it was, that they make sure you have probiotics around when you're, when you're on antibiotics as well to build them back up. Um, dietary changes, inflammation. So estrogen is an anti-inflammatory as we decrease with estrogen, uh, inflammation is increased. And this is why some people get like frozen shoulder as a symptom of menopause as well. Uh, and also like brain fog, those kinds of things. Hormonal changes, there we go. <laughs> Dare I say anything else? And lifestyle changes. So lifestyle changes is like the most important one it is the one we can work on actually um, I mean, we could do diet as well, but a lot of the other ones we can't really do too much about, um, to an extent, but lifestyle has got the biggest change. Okay. Look at this. Isn't this cute guys? I thought people would like this. I liked it. One cam saw it. He liked it as well. Um, so now is my little rant about calorie calculators. Oh geez, if any of you love them, but they are shit. Um, Louise says, I've got fibromyalgia, which was under control, has gone through the roof pain-wise. Yeah, so this could be lots of different things depending on age, could be um, the medication you're taking, if your gut health has decreased, um, like estrogen, like I mentioned earlier. So there's lots of different things that we need to be looking at on these kinds of things as well. Um, and this is why we we don't do like one size fits all coaching with our, with our clients, because everybody is different and everybody is different. So calorie calculators, anyone used them before? I'm going to go through the videos. I want to see some hands. Yeah. Nodding. Yeah. Mm. I did that as well. Mistake. So anyone had, uh, let's play a game. Who has ever used my fitness pal? Put their, put their information in. It's come up as 1200 calories. 
me. Yeah, Heather's nodding. Louise says yes. Yep, yep, yep. I can see you guys. It's not fun, is it? Yep, look at you guys. How is it that everybody needed 1,200 calories? Doesn't matter like where you started, funnily enough. 1,200, there we go. Um, so that would be great, wouldn't it, if everybody had the same amount and needed the same vitamins and minerals and everything. <laughs> Grace said she'd cry if she has to eat 1,200 now because, you know, Grace eats up to like 2,200, 2,500 she's been on before. So half in there is... Uh, would be terrible uh, and I don't think your husband would like it very much to be honest yeah, I wouldn't like it very much either just about deal with it now um so the calorie calculators are crap and do you know why this is it's because it doesn't take into consideration age hormones and medical conditions it doesn't take into control your diet and history so for example if you've ever eaten 1200 calories you or been on a shake diet or like uh you've cut calories extreme, you've done like a fad or fasting where you do the five two or whatever it's called, you guys will have the joy of probably rebounding weight back up. Anybody done that? I've done that. Yeah, Louise. Yep, yep. Uh yeah, I can see you guys nodding. I was constantly hungry, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So do you know what happens when you gain that weight back? When you lose the weight, you lose muscle and fat. When you gain it back, it's called fat offshoot, and you gain the fat back. Full stop. Don't gain the muscle back. You gain the fat back. So you gain more fat back than when you actually started. So every time you go through that cycle, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to lose weight, which is why chronic dieters find it more difficult to lose weight than people who start well, or properly, whatever you want to say. So calorie calculator doesn't take into account any of that, which is why it randomly gives information um, it also doesn't take into consideration, like, you might say, well, it says, you know, whether you're active or not. Do you know how many steps I've done today, guys? 2,689. That's how many steps I've done today. I did go to the gym, which is literally across the road, unfortunately. Very close. So lower steps. It doesn't take into consideration that. People think that I go to the gym twice or three times a week, so I'm active. No, that is not active. You probably burn less calories in that session than throughout the whole day if you were shopping, for example, right? Um, so that's what calorie cal calculators don't work. Please don't use them. I don't care whose you use, just don't, basically. Okay. So what should you do? You're probably thinking, oh, okay, like you just told me all of this stuff. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing now. You told me I need to work on my gut health. I now know what the endocrine system is. Like that's gonna help me. Uh, you told me I can't control most of it. You told me the lifestyle factors. But what am I supposed to actually do? Because now I can't use a calorie calculator because it makes me think of those little chocolate cakes with the poopers on the top. And then it makes you hungry. So we need to focus on one thing. What time is it? It's 20. I've got five minutes. I'm breezing through this. Um, so in five minutes, I will ask for questions if anyone's got any. But what should you do? We need to focus on one thing. I haven't got time in this one hour session to go through every single tactic that we use with our clients or that you could do, right? And also things that work for you, Louise, might not work for Gina, might not work for Leonora, might not work for Louise. So everybody needs a different approach, right? But I can give you one thing, this whole presentation to work on, okay? You guys can be, what this is, negative, in a negative way. Okay, we need to increase plants. Yes. Okay, I thought it was going to be a magic pill. No, it's not. Um, it is medicine in plants, okay? So increasing plants has been proven to help your gut health. Curious, has anyone, let me open the chat, uh, open the video so I can see everyone's faces. Has anyone, oh shit. Oh, has anyone tried going um, vegan or plant-based before? Yeah, Jackie, no. Good, Claire. <laughs> okay, so some people have and some people haven't. Have anyone, oh, currently vegan, Amy? Hell no, no, okay. So has anyone noticed or heard of someone that's gone, since I've been vegan, I've had so much more energy. Anybody hear that? I hear it all the time. I went vegan, I got loads of energy. Do you know why that was? Because they added in fruits and plants and vegetables because they couldn't eat meat. Right? They now couldn't eat chocolate because it's got milk in. They now couldn't eat pizza because it's got cheese on. They now couldn't eat 
whatever, normal cheese, because it's not plant based. And they have to fuel themselves and they can only eat vegetables and fruit, you know, fruit, veg and nut seeds, all those kinds of things. So that's why they felt better. So imagine if you could eat meat and so hit your protein easily and feel better because now you're just adding in some vegetables, right? That's that's the magic there. Uh, yes, that was a craze. For th- yeah, it was a craze a couple of years ago. And lots of documentaries, they actually made you feel guilty for eating meat. Yes, I've been eating lots of rainbow foods. Good, good, Louise. Um, just a side note on what Jenna said. Has anyone heard of, here I go again, sidetracked. Anyone heard of those Netflix documentaries like What the Health or that twin one that's out now? Anyone heard of them? They're like demonizing meat. Do you know who they're funded by? Arnold Schwarzenegger, who now has a plant-based product. Always look for who is put, who is, who is funding studies? Shelby will know a lot about this. But who is funding the studies? And what do they want the outcome to be, right? Who is funding these documentaries? And what do they want the outcome to be? Very, very interesting when we look at things like that. Uh, let me open the chat. That's what I meant. Yeah, if you have meat, you have can. If you have meat, you have cancer. Anyone know anyone that's not died of cancer that eats meat? Me. Like not every person that eats meat dies of cancer or has cancer. So untrue. Um, okay, so in <laughs> that was a that was a way way tangent. Increase nutrient variety to uh, an uptake, right? So now if you're eating more plants, you've got better gut health. You can take up the nutrients and absorb them, which makes you feel better, have more um, more energy, helps with the hormones, helps with the endocrine system, and all those kind of good things that we spoke about earlier. Increases satiety, makes you feel fuller. Anyone ever gone, oh, do you know what? I die. I'm so, I've eaten like all these vegetables. I'm still, I could just murder a bit of broccoli right now. Like, no, I'm, I'm full, thank you. Maybe not a salad, but a bowl of vegetables. You'd be good. Um, increases insulin sensitivity. That's what we want to happen. We want to be sensitive. And helps the hormone health, okay? Especially fat. But you said plants. Yeah. Some plants will contain fat. Avocado is a great uh, a great example. High in fat. Seeds, nuts, high in fat, high in fat. Still plants. They're high in fat. And we need these for the female sex hormones. We need them to help with cortisol. We need them to help with leptin. We need them, Grace, to help with growth hormone. And she'll be thrilled. Pistachio. Exactly. I knew she was going to say that. Um, because it is pistachio day. World pistachio day, actually. So she's happy. Got some growth hormone in there. She's going to feel uh, really buff soon. So this is what I want you guys to be focusing on. You might all go, oh, yeah, I don't want to do this. It's boring. You want boring and results? Or you want exciting and, and fuck all results? Like, make a choice, basically, right? Um, so these are all the plants. Happy celebrations. <laughs> yes. So when I say um, plants, it's not just fruit and vegetables, okay? It's... Um, Fruit, veg, nuts, seeds, herbs, spices, legumes, 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 legumes. How do you say that word? There's those anyway, beans, basically. Okay, beans are pluses. There are some lentils in there. So all of these foods are going to be really, really important to be able to maintain your health. Dark chocolate, not a, um, it doesn't count, I'm afraid. It is helpful, but it's, it doesn't count as a plant. It's got a cocoa seed in, obviously a cocoa thing. Um, Caffeine, co- uh, coffee is though. So coffee counts as one of your plants. So ideally you want to be hitting 30 plants, 30 different plants across the week, right? That's the goal, guys. If you are currently eating three, do not go to 30 because you will have constipation. You'll have gut issues, you'll be in pain and then you'll hate me. So instead, see how many you're eating averagely day to day now and just add like two, two a day and you're all good. Okay. What about the rest? Yeah, coffee counts, Nicole, yeah. As long as you're not throwing like a shit ton of sugar and syrups and all in. Teaspoon of flax seeds or chia seeds. Chucked in some Greek yogurt or oats. Bam, lots of nutrients. Perfect, Jen. Oats, that's another one. Um, If you guys saw my story earlier on, I was talking about chia seeds, throwing it in my oats with my Biscoff spread because I love a rare Biscoff. Um, black, yeah, you can have black coffee. It counts. Obviously, stick within the rules, Nicole. Coffee, <laughs> as a client, you know. So what about the rest? Okay, well, what about the rest? I want to do it all. Okay, so we are running a three-day deep dive in into 
how your lifestyle is causing damage to your hormones and gut. So you can identify these things. Uh, the mistakes that most people make when trying to lose weight. And we're going to be talking about nutrition and exercise in this because, yes, exercise has a huge role on your hormones. Huge, huge, huge. It's not about eating less and moving more. And the three things you could do to balance your hormones to lose weight. Okay, so I'm going to give you three tactics to walk away with on top of the plants that you've already got. So you're going to have four. It's going to change your life, guys. Starts Monday. Starts on Monday. Who wants in? Who wants it? Let me know in the chat. Me? Yes, Grace. You can come, I guess. Louise. If you got value today, guys, next week is going to just blow your mind. Now we've done all like the basis, you know, like now you understand what is going on. Now we can actually go into, okay, what is actually happening? You've got the like science behind it, you've got the biology, you're all now scientists, you know, for this hour. And then next week we're going to be like, okay, what can we do about it? What is the problem? Where, where are we fucking up our life, basically? Why do we make a bat loss so hard? Why do I feel like shit? Okay, so it is on Monday, guys. It is free, of course, because, you know, I just want to sort you guys out, essentially. And so here is how you sign up. You can go to bit.ly forward slash hormones three day. Or uh, you can scan this lovely little thing. So you guys can take a screenshot and uh, sign up through there if you want. How can I make myself be in one situ be in one place? There we go. We can use Gina. There we go. Hi uh, guys, so you can take a screenshot of this if you want to. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna send it out in the uh, replay of this tomorrow. So it'll also be in there. I'm still going to make next few weeks, but I'm interested. Not always. You have to turn up, or you can't come. People have got lives. It's absolutely fine. They're all going to be recorded. Okay, and um, they'll all be recorded. Of course, coming is better because you can ask questions, you can get involved, and it makes me feel more alive. So, from a selfish point of view, I'd love you guys to be there. Um, but, you know, people people can't come. That's fine. It will be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week, the same time as this. So in the UK, it's 7. Uh, in Central, it is 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Easter, too, of course. Okay. <clears throat> Got that. A little bit over. Any questions? Didn't even hit the full hour. I am well impressed with myself. I do say so. Any questions, anything you have learned, anything you want more information on, anything you want us to cover over the next, um, you know, in the next, in the three days, because I haven't started. <laughs> I haven't started creating the presentations yet, but if any of you guys want anything particular, I'll see if I can navigate in. Oh, I did tell someone I would add something in here about pregnancy. Okay, so your gut health has a uh, direct effect on your child's health. So if you have got good gut health and you're trying to have a baby or you're currently pregnant, the better your gut health, the less likely it is your child will have things like diabetes, any autoimmune diseases, any intolerances, uh, obesity, anything like that. So you need to work on your health as a mum to be able to then pass on those good genes to your kids. Okay, let's look at these. Do you have a list of the plants? I want to see how many I'm already eating. I don't have a list because there's probably like a million. So any plants. So the best thing to do would be to, this is a fun thing to do, write down, I'm really sad, guys. I don't drink alcohol. I'm like, yeah, this is really fun. Uh, <laughs> this is what to do, right? Throughout your week, every time you eat a plant, fruit, nuts, seeds, legumes, whatever that word is, uh, plant, uh, fruits, vegetables, whatever, write it down different ones so say you had carrots four times that does not count that's one right so you need to have a variety of them at the end of the week see how many you've done and then this is the fun part then go into the shop and pick something random that you've never had before and try that right because stuff here we're in albania i don't know what half this stuff is i'm like what's what's this like little tiny oranges and i'll put a picture up if anyone can help me out with what they are great i'd appreciate that um, but yeah, adding in one new one uh, a week is really helpful because it increases your gut microbiome. So you know the little bacteria you've got, they all like different foods and they all thrive off different nutrients. So if you're always eating the same things, some of those are going to die off. 
it's like having a favorite child and you're feeding that child and or favorite dog and the other dogs can like die no one wants that right so we need to make sure that we are feeding them all <clears throat> okay 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 i'm getting there why is it said to be bad for you to move around after you've eaten doesn't it make sense to move around yep i don't know who said it's bad for you to move around after you've eaten maybe if you've already eaten you jump then you're gonna be sick maybe um but digestive system is very very strong in fact if you hold if you held upside down and you eat the digestive system will still pull up so it like defies gravity essentially that's how strong it is so the muscle muscle going like this through it um so it is actually very good for you to go for a walk after meals very very good it helps with digestion is there any truth about the time you eat so people are saying if you have if you eat after six you'll gain weight. This is true. Everyone's like, what? Yeah. If you if today say I stopped eating at three, and I weighed this morning I was one forty five, and then tonight I eat at ten. Tomorrow when I weigh, I'm probably going to be heavier because there's going to be more food in my gut, right? Literally, is food in my gut. It is not fat. I've not gained two pounds of fat overnight. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just that there's more food in my gut. That's fine. If I go and weigh now when I'm 145, if I carry this and try and weigh again, I'm probably going to be 147 or whatever, how many liters this is. So does it matter? No. Um, do you lose fat or gain fat? No. Will you gain weight? Yes. But we need to ask ourselves what that weight is. Okay. Really important. Um, butter balls are great. Yes. Um, in the time and thing, you guys, you know, don't take that like literally like it yeah, really it does make you gain weight. Don't take it literally. Doesn't matter what time you eat, as long as your calories are consistent. Um, it does matter if you want to optimize specific things like fuel in for workouts, eating carbs before a workout is gonna be best. Oh. Eating protein after your workout is gonna be best. So there are nuances to this, but it's not gonna make you gain fat by eating late. And in fact, um, Lots of people like fast in the morning, don't they? It's actually better to fast in the evening if you want to do that for health reasons, not for weight loss. It doesn't affect weight loss, okay? Butter balls are great. Would you recommend eating a normal sized plate full of food or smaller plates of body recomposition? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, Shani, as long as you are eating the right macro profile and there aren't calories, obviously, and you're doing the right exercise and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, the gut can take like three to four hours for it to fully filter everything through. So sometimes we recommend leaving the three to four hours between meals to um, help our gut. But if you are on a bulk, like for example, Grace, if she's eating two and a half thousand calories a day, really hard to get that in like three big meals. So it'd be better for her to have like three proper meals and then a couple of snacks, some handful of pistachios and some pistachio cream probably with a spoon. This has helped me sort out the start of the jigsaw of perimenopause and the changes we've gone on the last 18 months. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing. Like, when people say, I've been to the doctor and they tell me I'm perimenopausal and I got all these symptoms and there's nothing I could do. I'm like, go somewhere else, please. Find like a different doctor. <laughs> Find somebody that will help you because there are a million different things you can try before A, needing HRT and B, having to suck it up and live with it, right? What amount of nuts should you do? Um, should you have a day? It depends. So it depends if you're in a build, if you're on a weight loss, uh, fat loss phase, if you are used to eating nuts, what kind of nuts? Uh, it could depend on your size, your activity level. Like it depends on everything. People ask me like, oh, how many grams of this am I supposed to eat? Like my oats. It doesn't work like that. What I eat doesn't directly like Gina wouldn't be able to eat the same and Louise wouldn't be able to eat the same and Leonora wouldn't be able to eat the same we're all different at different phases of our life at different uh, metabolic you know adaptations and so it, it depends like literally that can be the answer to all these questions depends Um, I've been reading about uh, melatonin today and how to decrease it uh, decrease uh, the decrease in it that causes gray hairs no stress I've recently got loads Huge, thick ones that are really stuck out. Well, I did not know that, actually, Rose. So, I'll uh, sort my melatonin out. Start, start taking some. <laughs> Kumquats. Hmm. I can hear Sam. 
Do different colors of peppers come to or different plants? That's a good question. It's a Shelby question. Shelby, where is she? Do um, different colors count? Is she in here? Is she, is she yeah, in here? Okay, fab. Oh, yeah, I see you. And do different color peppers count as different varieties? Yeah, I would say so. Because different ones have like different type of like uh, chemistry makeup basically with the colors and everything. So it can add a little bit of variety into your diet. So I think you'll be fine. Don't try to overthink it. Is I would my biggest advice on things like that. Um, if you're getting different colors, like you're using green, yellow, orange, or red ones, that's totally fine to have a variety of those. What about, what about bell peppers and more about chili peppers and more about like jalapeno peppers? Like just have a variety. Chuck them in, guys. I, you know, you're not worried about what you're putting into your body on the weekend when you're getting pissed. Don't worry about, you know, the variety of your pe peppers. What are we talking about? Are nuts still good despite being roasted and salted? I don't really like plain nuts, but I loved uh, salted pistachios. Grace, <laughs> Rose, we are going to be best friends. Um, pistachios, yeah, there we go. They're having a full-on bromance uh, about nuts there. So <laughs> nuts are good for you, yeah. So exactly what Grace said. It depends on the calories that you have as well. But also... I spoke to someone about this. I didn't use like strawberries, right, guys? And do you know how I started eating strawberries? I covered them in chocolate. Like that was the only, I dipped them in chocolate. So anyway, I'd eat a strawberry. And then I started pouring it on. And then I went from milk to dark. And now I have like a, well, then I was having like a little bit of dark. And now I just can eat strawberries. Okay, so if you do not like nuts, unless it's salted and roasted or whatever, but you want to get into it, then you can start there and then decrease, you know, start to mix like, um, a few, not a handful, like a few into like normal plain nuts and they'll kind of share the salt, I guess, and the flavor. And then you can start trying those, then add less and less and less and you'll kind of transition into enjoying those ones, okay? Um, so that's what I would recommend there. Same with any food. Um, I just bought some home from America. I think she's talking about pistachio cream. If you count calories, how do you know what a calorie deficit is? Yes, you want um, because people will say, I'm going to go into a calorie deficit. I'm like, okay, how many calories are you going to have? 1,200, 1,600, wherever it's going to be. Okay, what are you eating at the minute? Don't know. But 16 will be a deficit. Yeah, but if you're doing 3,000, so will 2,800, right? So we need to slowly, we need to analyze where we're at with everything. How many fruits are we having? How much fiber are we having? How many vegetables are we having? How many plants? What calories are we on? How much protein are we having? Right? How much water are you drinking? How many steps are we getting? There's no point in going from zero to 100 on anything. You're going to screw yourself over. You're going to fail. You're going to get pissed off with yourself and think you're a failure and you're going to suck, right? And then you're going to do the offshoot again, the fat offshoot. So you need to know where you're at with everything, every single thing. Um, I, oops, I have tracked my salted and dry roasted nuts and my calories. There we go. Yeah, so if it fits, it sits. If it's a fit, right? I started going great at 13. Not sure about that. Oh, oh. maybe melatonin was like rubbish at uh, at 13, Susan. Um, interesting, though. Interesting. But not squash and sweet potato with chocolate. Oh, <laughs> okay, maybe not that. But roasted, roast sweet potatoes, like, are delish. Okay, so you could do that. Um, you could put like some something on it like I don't know some people like cinnamon I don't like cinnamon but maybe you could have like some paprika or some you know something with it or mayonnaise tomato sauce it's just in my dinner on it was like all vegetables a bit of chicken stuck some mayonnaise on it I'm good right so you can add in these things and then decrease them have them with what you like um you can also use them with like butternut squash noodles if any of you guys have heard those boodles um, and then you can have them with your spaghetti bolognese instead of the spaghetti. Any Italians in here, Teresa? I'm sorry. Anyone else? I apologize. But you can swap that out and then have the, the bolognese so it tastes of tomato sauce and tastes of like marinara sauce or whatever. That'd be a good one. Um, just had roasted sweet potatoes, broccoli, and steak with low-fat mayo. Perfect. Sounds delish. I wish I could like avocado. Tried it a few different ways. Can't like it. People who are have been on my stories over the last like few months will have seen my transition to avocado. Do you see Claire? Do you see my story today? 
this morning with my my four pound avocado. Yes, there we go. That's my that's how much I can eat now. So I started off with like the tiniest little bit, like this, literally like this, um, and then I've like added it in slowly and slowly and slowly under my eggs. Is how I tend to do it. Like make sure the egg yolk goes all over it, mush it up a little bit, and taste it. Right. I made myself like it, and now I actually do like it. There we go, Jen. That's it. My sister. I'm gonna dob her in it now. My sister doesn't like cinnamon or didn't like cinnamon. But when we go to America, she likes the, the smell of Cinnabon, which is like those like cinnamon roll cake things with sugar, icing all over it. So she trained herself in a year to uh, to enjoy cinnamon so she could have in Cinnabon. Now every time we go to America, she's like, Cinnabon. She loves that. Um, so there we go. <laughs> Life fulfilled. That's the key then. Hide it in food. Yeah, hide it. Yeah, hide it, disguise it with everything, basically. And then slowly get rid of whatever you hide it. So, guys, that, oops, that seems to be all the questions. I know we've uh, gone a little bit off topic and gone a little bit late, but is there anything else you guys want to know? Anything you're like, oh, this doesn't make sense? Well, shit, today. Eh? Happy to have a debate. Whenever. Whoever, I will take you on. I stand by everything I've said in this presentation, um, unless the research tells me otherwise. If you can bring a study to me, I might reconsider it. No worries, no worries, no worries. I am happy you guys got some information, got some value. And I look forward to seeing you guys on next Monday. But if there's anything you want in that in those presentations, then definitely let me know and I will um, try and add that in for you. No worries. If you're a client, I will see you on Wednesday for a Zoom. I was thinking, is it Wednesday? Yep, I'll see you on Wednesday for the Zoom. Uh, I know Claire and Phil can do tomorrow. Anyone else I've got calls with, see you soon. Otherwise, have a fantastic evening and afternoon, and I'll speak to you soon.